Well, hey there, Westtown. Welcome to another Bible in a Year recap video. Hope everybody had a uh, happy Memorial Day weekend. And uh, we're going to get into some new books today. Uh, first of all, you probably noticed that we have finally gotten through Psalms, spent a good uh, five months going through those. And now we've gotten on to Proverbs. And Proverbs is a book written by King Solomon, and it's a book about wisdom. And uh, one of the things you'll see is that in the structure of this book, you'll get through about uh, 10 chapters um, where it's more, uh, I would say, a, a little bit like narrative poetry. Um, you, you have some examples of, of uh, metaphor where, where Lady Wisdom is mentioned a couple times, and it talks about uh, a young man um, who is either attracted to Lady Wisdom or not attracted. Um, and so we're going to get through about 10 chapters of that. And then we get into um, basically the, the, la the rest of it is all these little short proverbs. Uh, they're, they're little sayings uh, about wisdom. What is wisdom like? What is foolishness like? And in the end, what we, what we learn is that um, this is a book about how the world normally works. It's a book about what is normally wise and what is normally foolish. Um, you're going to go through these Proverbs and you're going to say, yeah, that, that makes sense. That's normally a wise way to live. Um, the one thing we have to remember, though, is that sometimes, um, even if you live your life with great wisdom from the Lord, uh, things still turn out bad. And other times, you can live as a complete fool and things will turn out good. So it doesn't always work exactly the way the Proverbs say they will. Um, it's just how things normally work. And in the end, the main thing about the Proverbs is that wisdom is, it starts with the fear of the Lord, not being afraid of God, but being in awe of God by recognizing that we are his creatures and he is our creator. And what, it is, what is good and what is right and what is wise is for us to look to him uh, for how to live our lives. So that's Proverbs in a nutshell. Another book, new book we started was Deuteronomy. Uh, and Deuteronomy is a, is a funny name. Um, the, the reason it's called Deuteronomy, though, is because that word in the original um, Greek Septuagint, which is a, um, is a translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek, um, the word Deuteronomy means second law giving. Second law giving. And that's because... Uh, the book of Deuteronomy is when the Israelites have finally um, come towards the end of their wandering in the wilderness. And now God is preparing the second generation of Israelites uh, to once again be poised to take the promised land, uh, which we know they do in the book of Joshua. But before they do that, Moses is instructed to give them the law again. Uh, and so this book has a lot of the same laws that you read in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. The Ten Commandments are repeated in this book. Um, a lot of the priestly laws and cleanliness laws are repeated. Um, and so that's the whole point of the book of Deuteronomy. Um, it is, is Israel as they're once again about to uh, take the promised land. But then let's go ahead and look real quick at... A beloved book, a book that many children will know and maybe many children sing about, and that is the book of Jonah, the prophet. Jonah is instructed by God to go uh, from his home in Israel to, uh, to share a warning to the people of Nineveh. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. Assyria was known for its, uh, for its authority, its power, its cruelty. They were a cruel people. And eventually Assyria would be the ones who would come and take the northern kingdom of Israel into exile. Uh, but first, God gives them a chance to repent. Of course, we know the story, Noah, uh, not Noah, <laughs> another guy who went on a boat. But uh, Jonah, <laughs> Jonah says, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going as far away from Nineveh as I possibly can. In fact, what he's saying is I'm going as far away from God as I possibly can. So I'm going to Tarshish, which Tarshish was... For them, the ends of the earth. Uh, it was, I think, in Spain. And so jo Jonah is headed to the furthest point that he knows that he can go to, which is Tarshish. 
So of course we know you can't outrun God and we know what happens. Jonah ends up in, in the boat and, and there's a storm and, and the sailors are afraid. And, and Jonah says, throw me overboard. He's swallowed by the giant fish. He's in the giant fish. Seemingly he's changed his heart, right? So he's praying to God, praying to God. Oh God, thanks for delivering me. I was almost down to Sheol. Thanks for delivering me. And what does the fish do? The fish vomits him up onto dry land. Now we can read into this a little bit if we want and say, uh, maybe Jonah's heart really hasn't changed. And he's just, um, you know, he's just kind of thankful that his, his God saved his skin. Um, but he's still not really jiving with what God's going to have him do. And so God's like, yeah, I can, I can see your heart, buddy. Um, I'm going to vomit you up on the dry land. Maybe, maybe that's the case. Maybe not. I don't know. But what I do know is that when Jonah finally gets to Nineveh, he is not happy about it. There's nothing joyful about this. He, he is not excited to be doing the Lord's work. He's not really doing this out of thankfulness. He's mostly doing it out of uh, rote obedience. Um, and I know that because when he gets to Nineveh, he goes as quickly as he can into the middle of the city he says what God told him to say, and then he leaves. And amazingly, the, the Ninevites repent. They're like, oh my goodness, you're right. We've sinned against the Lord. We have to repent. Everyone, let's have a fast. We're going to repent. And chapter 4 is so interesting because in chapter 4, Jonah's angry about this. Jonah is so angry that the Ninevites have repented. And he says, in fact, this is why I didn't want to go to Nineveh in the first place. Because God, I knew that you were a God of mercy. And that, and that if the Ninevites hear about you, they will repent. And yet he's angry about it. Why is he angry? Why is Jonah so angry? Well, I think it's probably because Jonah is struggling mightily with self-righteousness. He thinks that these Ninevites don't deserve salvation. And so when, when Jonah is actually confronted with this good news, he he can't stand it he doesn't like it and so anyway what is jonah's heart condition it's hard um he needs he needs the gospel he needs the same message that he just delivered to the ninevites and maybe that's a, that's a um a warning to all of us to remember that no matter what our what our situation is uh, we are always in need of the gospel whether we've been christians for 30 years or three minutes we always need the gospel. We always need to be reminded of the grace of God. That's that's for us and that's for everybody. And uh, that's it for this week. That's a lot today, but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this time and hopefully you're enjoying your Bible reading and we'll, we'll catch you next time.